Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're watching Ted Lasso. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are finishing season two of Ted Lasso. I'm not going to lie, uh, the last episode with Coach Beard, not my favorite. Um, I loved that we got more of Coach Beard, and I love that, like, those tertiary characters of, like, Paul and the rest of the crew from the pub were with him, and we kind of got to see them interact a little bit more. Um, but uh, definitely not not my favorite episode, uh, not going to lie. Yeah, I think maybe also following a very emotional episode and then launching right into that one. I thought that like Coach Beard was gonna be in peril <laughs> for some reason. I thought he was gonna die the entire episode. Um, and, and I think it's because I was already really like high with emotion and, and I was just waiting for the other shoe to drop. And then not being able to really figure out what the hell was going on because I was like, is he in a coma? Like, is this in his head? Cause like the fight with like Jamie's father and then the other fight with the big dude and the girl taking him home to fix his pants. Like, like the, 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 bar that they were at and then like the hallway that kind of looked like the church like club and then the church club itself and then like the commentators eating dinner there like i was just like what is going on in this episode uh i, I mean it was creative i'll give it that much but not my favorite um but that hug <laughs> that hug uh, i can't think about it without like getting tears in my eyes because like, I am somebody that when I see somebody that is under duress or they're stressed or they're, like, like this close from having a breakdown, I'm like, somebody hug him. And, like, I was just, like, anybody, like, like, and I'm always like, I wish I could give that person a hug. And, like, that's really what I wanted to do is I was like, please, somebody give him a hug. <laughs> and then the one person that... I mean, if, if, if you had told me that Roy Kent was going to be there to physically comfort Jamie in a moment that big, I would have been like, yeah, right. And the second it happened, that was the person that needed to be there for him to show him support and, and to allow him to open up and to just fall apart. Like that pillar of strength that is Roy Kent needed to be there for Jamie Tart. And, like, part of me, like, really was like, oh, that, that should have been Ted, like, filling in for the father figure. He needed Roy. He needed Roy. And especially because, you know, I, I'm not happy that it happened. <sighs> I'm, I'm, I'm only grateful that it happened in front of the entire team. They all saw Jamie's father, who Jamie had in his life to make him who he used to be and then what a change Jamie has gone through and who he is now despite that man and I'm happy they all got to see that and I, I'm, I'm really hoping that these next couple episodes explore that especially with the therapist um I'm I don't know if we ever get any of the actual like like therapy moments and we're able to witness those because we see some of Ted's um, and maybe like the tail end and like Colin, like really walking out and being like, I'm a confident, capable man, you know, like I, I would love to see like what she's talking to them about and like why Colin felt like he wasn't a confident and capable man. Um, and kind of like, you know, Jamie just talking about himself and probably launching into a little bit about his father. I think that that would be really interesting to see. Um, but the person that needs to be in that room talking to her is Nate. I will tell you that, like, the first I'm crying, I, it breaks my heart, the path that Nate is going down, because he's presented now with power, which he never had before. He was always the person who was getting pushed around. He was kicking a turd around the field in the first season, like literally kicking a piece of poop. And now he's a coach and he's trusted by Ted and, and Coach Beard and like he's part of the Diamond Dogs and like like he is like a member of this team and he's valued and I don't even want to say it's going to his head like he wants more and it's okay to want more it really is but don't act like a dick and I don't know at what point that like sweet kid turned into a f hole. But he has, and especially how he's treating Will. 
Like, you know, like he, he was, he was so rude to Colin and then he apologized to Colin in front of the whole team and the whole team embraced him. And I was like, that's great. Like, I think maybe he needed that or whatever. And really he just keeps seeing this weaker link that he like has to attack and make himself feel bigger and better somehow. And it's because Will represents what, you know, Nate used to be, which is kind of the low man on the totem pole. And he hates that. He hates being reminded of that. It's frustrating. I'm super frustrated with Nate. I really hope that he would talk to the therapist, but I don't know. I don't know how you fix that. I mean, that's an attitude adjustment, and I don't know how you fix that. Now, the reveal with Ted... Like, I had even said at the beginning of my last reaction that I think a lot of his inability to, you know, open up and share, it's not only from his divorce, but when he said that his father died when he was young, and I was like, yeah, I mean, like, he probably had to step up and be the man of the household, or like, you know, if his mother was devastated, he probably, you know, puts on this, like, really happy front. Not, it's not even a front, but like, he just feels like if he's this guy then like his mom won't cry, that she won't be upset, that she'll smile, that she'll be happy in his presence and he will have done that for her. And he does that for everybody. He even tries to do it for himself. And I love that. And then you see him when he it goes to a really dark place that he's drinking pretty heavily and like he doesn't have an outlet. And I think talking to the doc is definitely the outlet that he needs. Um, and, I, and I hope it works. You know, I hope it, 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 helps him to deal with that and that he keeps going. I hope he doesn't think that like just a couple times that he has talked to her that it's enough that like, you know, opening up to her about his father killing himself, I think is kind of like going to open up a floodgate because you can sit there and talk to a therapist and just phone it in. And then when you share something real, like, after she shared something very real about herself being afraid to, like, go back out on her bike because she had just been hit by a car and how much it ma it means to her and that she's, you know, scared to do it. And they kind of have the same drinking problem, too. But he now will trust her a little bit more and open up a little bit more. And I definitely think, like, the uh, the father issue. This, this show, there's so many father issues. I mean, between Nate and Jamie and, and, and Roy... <laughs> And like, I think I said this, I'm not sure, I, I can't remember, but I feel like, I feel like Higgins is like the ultimate dad on the show. He seems to be there for all of his kids, emotionally supportive. He He's in love with his wife. She's in love with him and they're happy together. They're sweet. You know, I, I just, um, if, if, if you're going to be a dad in the world, be a Higgins. <laughs> Except the fucking jazz beard. Don't you dare. <laughs> I'm all sweet and sentimental, and then I'm like, no ugly facial hair, no bad hats, and no ugly facial hair. Those are the rules. I, I don't I don't write them, actually, I do. Those are my rules. But anyway, okay, guys. <laughs> Let's get into these last three episodes so I can start season three and finally catching up to where all of you are. I'm looking forward to it. So, guys, let's get into it. Yeah! Should we tell people about us? No. Mm -mm. I'm enjoying the secrecy. Sneaking around at work. Wait, how long has this been going on? You told people about us. <sighs> then I could do this in public. Not really. You can't date a player. Where are we going? How about green? Oh, oh my god! You don't have to put anything away. So come on, Mother. What's my father done this time? He died. Whoa. See? More father stuff. I like to imagine a heaven where animals are in charge and humans are the pets. Absolutely. I love Higgins. I like to spend eternity curled up in front of a fire at Cindy Clawford's feet. Oh. <laughs> I'd like to be reincarnated as a tiger. Oh. And then ravage anyone who looked at me wrong. 
Yep, sounds about right. You know, if you weigh a person's body right after death, it's 21.3 grams lighter. And some say that's the weight of a soul. Whoever figured that out clearly weighed someone, murdered them, then weighed them again. <laughs> you live, you die, you die. <laughs> Good night. Oh, wise words from Roy. So we're all going to his funeral as a team. So that means ties, shirts, <laughs> and no trainers. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. But what if they're like really nice Yeezys? What? I mean, yeah. What color? Black. Bright red. No. Mm -mm. Mm. Aww. Really? Rick Astley? You know, the old Rebecca used to love that song. Yeah, well, the whole world used to love that song. Then we heard it at nauseam, and now we're over it. Yeah. Well, I don't work that way. Once I love something, I love it forever. Oh, She's talking about your father. Morning, Sissy! Oh, oh Sissy! <laughs> Nora, hurry up! I'm taking my time and being oh. careful. She's making Nora climb up? I love that. Roy, if you die, do you want to be buried or cremated? Like, if you were hit by a bus today, what do I do? Go after the bus driver and make him pay for what he did to me. <laughs> Avenge me, Keely. Avenge me. Avenge me! <laughs> I found this company, and they bury you in a biodegradable sack. I like it. So when your body decomposes, it fertilises the seeds of a fruit tree. I love That's it. That's what I want. That's what I like. Because then yeah. you and all the people that love me can eat the fruit from my tree. Ugh. That is fucking mental. Yes. Coming from the guy that wants me to ruin a bus driver's life just because he killed you, swerving to avoid a child. I didn't know about a fucking child. <laughs> Not really angry, are you? Yes, I actually am. Oh. Now we have to go to a funeral and act sad. Well, now I am sad. <laughs> I think you can do that at uh, Joshua Tree. They'll put you in a burlap bag and bury you under a cactus. I love that. Are you going to be okay going to a funeral about a father? Call the doctor, call the doctor, call the doctor. Damn it. Oh my goodness. I can't believe you made it. Of course. Dad always loved you both. Who is that? Who are they? <laughs> I've no idea. <laughs> My darling Deb. Rupert. My sincerest oh. condolences. And introducing Diane. Oh, what a chubby baby. <laughs> Congratulations, Mother. You've just fat shamed a baby to tears. <laughs> yeah, I had all the TVs in the house removed. I just sit around and watch them all day. I love me. That's not creepy at all. Why do you want to hurt her so much? You already have. I don't understand. My condolences. Thank you. Sorry, Miss Wallace. How many of them came? All of them. Another of them are wearing trainers. Aww. That's how much they care about you. Oh. <laughs> Poor Danny. <laughs> Everyone, thank you all so much for coming. Sorry for your loss. What's going on with Nate's hair? Has it always been that color? Beard. It's a weird thing to do at a funeral, but why not? Sassy. Oh, punch him in his face. Her, I love her. I think about your death every single day. Oh, I can't wait. I love that. I'm gonna wear red to your funeral. I will be a beacon of joy to the other three people there. <laughs> Always a pleasure, Sassy. Fuck off and die, Rupert. I love her. So much. Now go make Ted happy. I hate that man. That baby sucks. Absolutely. It's not the baby's fault. That baby's whack. I hate it. <laughs> She's so supportive. I won't leave your side. Nope. Oh and like that, she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> you look amazing. Thank you. You're fine. Keep walking. 
<laughs> I love sassy. But I think Rebecca is secretly dating someone. What? Oh boy. Is today an inappropriate day to inquire slash badger her into telling us who? Yes. We'll never know unless we try. Oh God, girls. <laughs> is this um? Is this the suit that Ted got you? What the yeah? this? Mm. Um, can't remember. Yes, uh, Nate. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another man buying you clothes is infantilizing, yes? Shut up, dude. Really, Roy? Is that a fucking apple? Yeah. <laughs> I got it from a tree outside. Tastes like dead people. <laughs> That's not funny, Roy. <laughs> it is kind of funny. You want some to drink? A cup of tea or something? Sit down, Ted. No, thank you. I hate tea. Oh, good. Tastes like a wet paper bag. There you go. Look at them bonding. I'll tell you anything. <laughs> Ultimate trust. I just wish you were here. Me too. I love funerals. Is it an open casket? God, I hope so. I like to see. <laughs> Me too. So weird. I dig weird, and that's really weird. Dinky? Mm. Who are you secretly shagging? Mm. What are you even talking about? <laughs> Bullshit text after the date. The fact I have not seen you outside of work for two weeks. Even though today is your father's funeral, you are glowing like a girl that just got properly plowed. Oh, okay. Shit. <gasps> oh, I knew it! I knew it! I knew it! I've been asked to come in and tell you to lower your voice. <laughs> He's trying to figure out who Rebecca's shagging. Oh, oh I know. Don't, no, not in front of the... Mother. Ah! Not in front of her, hang though. On, hang on. Nora can't be here for this. Oh, God. Uh, is he tall? Yes. Is he Sam? Oh. How the fuck did you know that? Ah! Oh, my God, I'm fucking ah! Are you... oh, Excuse me. Is Nora going to be okay with that? You okay, Nora? Sorry. Boss ass. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> it's possible that going to this funeral would trigger memories of going to your own father's funeral. I didn't go to my dad's funeral. Okay, why not? Yeah. Because he quit. Ow. Ow. Oh. You know, he quit on his family. He quit on himself. And I hated him for that. I think I still hate him for it. Yeah, I think so. I think you do too, Ted. It's okay. And that's okay. <laughs> what happened with your father is a difficult thing for anyone to make sense of, especially his teenage son. Do you know what you're going to say in your eulogy? I don't do a eulogy. Rebecca? It would look awful if you didn't say anything at your own father's funeral. They didn't talk about this ahead of time? I've got nothing nice to say. What's got into you as a good father? A wonderful husband? Dad cheated on you. And I saw it. Mm. Wow. I heard... Bang! So we went to investigate. I opened up the door and... There he was. In all his glory, with his ass in the air, with Mrs. Reynolds screaming his name. Went to the fridge, grabbed one of his Coors Lights, drank that. Then I called my mom at work and let her know she needed to come home. It's why I've always hated him. <laughs> and I still hate him. You knew and you did nothing. Of course I knew. I know everything. Then I hate you too. Oh. I hate you for letting him treat you like that. Wow. He took a lot away from you. And my mom. Yeah. And your mom, yes. He was a good dad. And I don't think really he knew that. <gasps> I think if he would've known how good he was, I don't think he would've done it. And I wish I would have told him. I wish I would have told him more. And I knew right then and there that I was never going to let anybody get by me without understanding they might be hurting inside. You know, 
life. It's hard. It's real hard. Thank you, Ted. I don't know if this is illegal or something, but can I have a hug? Sure. Are you going to charge me for this session? <laughs> of course I am. <laughs> How's school? I appreciate your integrity. <laughs> You're welcome. Besides, Rupert was a self-righteous shit. Thank you. Then why are you always so nice to him? Because, my darling, the best way to deal with people like that is to make sure they know they can't get to you. I'm actually glad to hear that you hate me. All these years, I thought you didn't feel anything for me. I'll take your anger over your indifference any day. Wow. I thought her mother was just a dingbat, and she actually is a wise woman. Does that kill him with kindness? Uh, my father was, um... Just say it. We're no strangers to love. You know the rules. And so do I. It... <laughs> She Rick rolling them at a funeral. Just want to tell you how I'm feeling. Try to make you understand. Never gonna make you cry. Never gonna see. Never gonna say goodbye. Thank you, Dad. <laughs> Never gonna tell a lie. And hurt you. He's such a good friend. I thought she was gonna go full ham on her dad and just let him have it. Everything that was wrong. I'm afraid we have to go. Oh. It's nap time. For you or the baby. Oh! oh. <laughs> I love Sassy. I'll convince Bex to give up her shares in Richmond. We'd love you to have them. Like a funeral present? Hmm? Or for purchase. What is he doing with Nate? Yeah, I don't like it either, Rebecca. I think I need to break it off with Sam. What? Why? Wait, are you worried about Preston? <sighs> Maybe. I know. Penis is too big. That's your tiny little Jesus. <laughs> yes, that's it. <laughs> Speaking of which... Oh! <laughs> that's a weird segue, but I'll take it. I know that you're with Roy and that you're happy. But today's made me realise that I'd hate myself if I didn't say... I didn't just come back to Richmond to get away from my dad. I also came back because of you. I finally think that I'm becoming the best version of myself. You are. The kind of man that you always knew that I could be. I love you, Keela. Because when my granddad died, I spent every single night for a whole year praying that I could just talk to him just once. We only got this one life. And I don't want to waste a second of it. I love you, Keely. Oh. Okay. That's a lot of I love yous in like 30 seconds. Both are great, but like, please stay with Roy. I've wanted to do this all day, but I haven't had the chance. Oh, <laughs> he's a hugger. I'm a hugger. You're so kind and loving and wise, but. Oh no, I hate big butts and I cannot lie. <laughs> You can really hurt me. But you can hurt me too. Well, doesn't that scare you? No. Does it scare you? Yes. But Rebecca, there's something I should warn you of. Yes. I'm only gonna get more wonderful. <laughs> I know. 
you and Sam taking a break? How did you know that? I'm your mother, I know everything. <laughs> Besides, I saw him coming out of the cupboard looking sad. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, mother. <laughs> I think you had a bit of a thing for the cast, mother. Uh -huh. No, I thought he was black. Yes. I know the voice doesn't match the face. It really doesn't. Today has been all about one man. Sam, really? Take a bow, Sam Obisanya. The first hat trick of his career. Hey, good job, Sam. Final match of the season, one win away from promotion back to the Premier League. An incredible turnaround. What a performance by the young Nigerian. So happy for Sam. Wish me luck. For what? I know he said that that car was too much for him to handle before. I think it still is. Oh my god, Colin. Okay, I was expecting to hear a crash. Thank God. I worry about Colin. I really do. I'm not big on love triangles, so I hope they squash this Jamie, Keeley, Roy Kent thing quickly. Ted. Yeah? Guess who is going to be featured in Vanity Fair's business issue as a powerful woman on the rise? I finally got it! This is incredible! <laughs> Ted! Yeah. Not you. Oh, it's just an honor to be mad, fit, and successful. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Sharon's last day is tomorrow. We're all chipping in to get her something special. What did you decide on? An envelope of cash. Oh. <laughs> that works. I just received an email from Edwin Akufu, and he wants to speak with you, Rebecca. Who's that? Who is Edwin Akufu? Yeah. His father owns the largest tech firm in Ghana. I think he wants to buy the club. Ooh. I've got the suit Ted bought you back from the dry cleaners. Oh, it's my suit. The second Ted gave it to me, ownership transferred, and it became my suit, Will. Nate. Oh, you're driving me crazy! Are my eyebrows crazy? A little bit. Ted, can you run a new tactic by you? Hey, you can run it, walk it, cartwheel it to me. I don't care. Call me Dumbo, because I'm all ears. <laughs> Is that a yes? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, when we play Brentford, we should play with a false nine. Couldn't agree more. What is that? Play without strikers. Okay, so we got both our aces tucked up our sleeves, huh? Love that. Oh, here we go again. Give Ted yet another idea. He'll take all the credit for. Easy, oh. Nate. That's the job, son. Do you guys ever want to be in charge? Be the boss? No. Get all the credit? Ew. We used to believe that trees competed with each other for light. We now realize that the forest is a socialist community. Trees work in harmony to share the sunlight. Thank you, Coach Beard. Can't you just give me a straight answer for once? I think I just did. Yeah. I'm telling everyone it was my idea, which it was. Okay. Then don't call it the false nine, call it the eight. Your eyebrows aren't crazy. Thank you. They're psychotic. I appreciate that. He does have psychotic eyebrows, but I like him. These guys are just not in sync. It's okay. Oh, hell no, no, no. Hey, hey. <laughs> no, 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 guys, come on. That ain't gonna cut it. You may hate me, but it ain't no lie. <laughs> yeah. Then the hands. Bye, bye, bye. Yeah. All right? <laughs> now, look, fellas, performing this at Doc's Going Away Party ain't going to mean Bo Jackson oh, okay. doing the squat unless you can tell how hard we worked on it. It ain't the execution. That ain't the gift. It's the effort. Yeah? OK? You see the main? Oh. <laughs> oh, is this the billionaire guy? Edwin from Ghana? You can't land on the pitch. That's not good for the, the, the grass. I don't know. It's a very, very dramatic entrance. Oh, he looks nice! 
<laughs> so you must be Edwin Akufu, huh? Right. I'm Ted Lasso. Ah, so I don't shake hands. But I have someone who does. Uh, Francis. Oh. Yes. And you're Michelle. Okay. Well, what's it say? Uh. Ooh, woo! That is one of the best handshakes I've ever hand shook right there. Firm yet comforting, you know, like a weighted blanket from a hand toes. <laughs> it's so stupid. I love it. You take it from here. And if it's got to be me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight. I love it. <laughs> Jamie's good at it too. He's got that JC hair. Coach? That was it! Yeah! <laughs> All right. Fault nine. Let's go. Uh, I'm interested in buying one of your players, Sam Obasanye. But Rebecca loves Sam. Oh, well, you might... Yeah, we all love Sam. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Easy, Keely. <laughs> what club is it that you actually own? I don't. This is not one I can talk about yet. But it is a team in Africa, and I figured that Sam might appreciate the opportunity to play near his family. You know, his home. It smells weird. Sam? This is Edwin Akufu. Oh, he doesn't like the shake. <gasps> That's not nice. It's lovely to meet you all. Text Sam and say, like, I refused. I'm not trying to sell you. I just wondered if you'd mind helping me pick out a fancy suit. Oh. That's the fucking lately. Yeah. Pretty woman him. It's Coach Kent. Which can only mean nobody told him it's a half day and Phoebe's mom picked her up hours ago. Fun. <laughs> for 20 quid, you can buy your kids' art. For 40, I'll send it home with you already in a rubbish bin. That's a solid business model. <laughs> Which one of these is Phoebe's? Oh, I won't be able to display Phoebe's artwork. Oh. Why not? Does it look murderous and psychotic? Oh, no. Oh. She draws tits. Unnervingly accurate charcoal sketches of breasts. Yes. <laughs> Some of the boys stole them, and I think are using them as currency. <laughs> They're all different, too. Hey, buddy, I gotta let you go, okay? Have a great day at school. I love you. Love you. Hey, boss, what's up? Right, I'm just gonna come out and say it. I had a tour to favor Sam. Dad, I'm still on. Oops. <laughs> I think I need to end it. Sure, I can see that. I mean, I asked him for a bit of time to figure things out. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Now we're in a bit of a limbo situation. And you're his boss. I think, mean, come on. Sam and Rebecca are already one of my all-time favorite TV couples. To have one of them in real life? Whew. Yes, please. Oh, I didn't even put that together. You just listen to your gut, OK? And on your way down to your gut, check in with your heart. Between those two things, we'll let you know what's what. I love Ted so much. They make good harmony, like two thirds of Bone Thugs in Harmony. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I love their friendship. I loved what it's turned into. And also trying to picture Ted thumping to like, it's the first of the month. Come on, get up, get up. <laughs> this oh. is Jess. I don't think but so. I'm worried about the crotch. Does the crotch feel loose? The crotch looks loose. Keely. So it's on the crotch. Uh, that's a lot of focus on a crotch. Glass of champagne? Mm -hmm. I'm all right, thanks. So. It's free. And can you see the prices? You're going to wish you drank more of it. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, um, yeah uh, whiskey. Thank you. <laughs> that's why I'm a t-shirt gal. 25 bucks. Got my outfit for, like, the next five years. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, Ted, but Sharon's already gone. I uh, beg to differ, Higgy Stardust. Sharon's last day is manana. Yes, but an emergency came up and she has to leave tonight. Wait, she left without saying goodbye? Oh. Uh, she wrote everybody a letter. Um, mine was very nice. Aww. Here's yours. No. Yeah, he doesn't do well with that. That's like no, an abandonment thing with him. Get away with it, Ted. Yes. <laughs> Higgins knows. <laughs> Sam, 
I am a walking confliction. You know, I am a billionaire, yet I don't believe billionaires should exist. Hmm. That's why I'm breaking up my father's empire. And I'm using the money to make better things. Hmm. And hopefully make things better. You are not at all what I expected. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <gasps> ah. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you look so hot. I don't know about hot, but he looks good. You're so good at everything and always helping people and making things better. Just like you. Do you have a crush, Nate? People like you and I, we can't help but dream big. And no one is going to fight harder for their dreams than us, right? Right. Mm. The scariest part of all of it is making the decision to just go for it. Because once you do that, then everything just sort of... No! Goes... No! No! God, I'm so, so I'm so sorry. I didn't... It's okay. No, it's not. It's not okay, no. No, it's fine. It was... No. It's it happens not. sometimes it's to not. the best of us. <laughs> I just, um... I... God, I'm, I'm good. She got all the men going after her. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about that. See, old Miss Bowen, the main teacher. Uh -huh. Girl, baby likes you. Most of them hate me. They have like 20 different main nicknames for me. Go on. Miss Bowlegs, Miss Boring, Miss Bonehead, Miss Bellend, Bodie, Miss Boatface. <laughs> and then there's one little boy who simply calls me Fuck Witch. Which okay. is admittedly my favorite. I like it too. My first coach used to chase me around the pitch on a motorbike like we were in fucking Mad Max. That's terrifying. Yeah. It made me fast. <laughs> Are you married? No. Do you want to be? You're not going to stay for the art show? No. Sorry. Thanks for all your help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shut up. Karen, for God's sake, grow the fuck up. <laughs> Poor Karen. But, like, yeah. Well, 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 look what the weird bike rode in. Ted, how long have you been standing out here? A long time. And I really got to use the john, too, but I'm going to hold it a little bit longer because I'm so dang ticked off at you. Thank you for carrying out. How could you just leave? Sorry, I'm not good with the bikes. My wife left me, my dad left me. You, more than anyone in the world, knows how I feel when I get abandoned. That's what I said, Neil. Yeah. It's all in the letter I left for you. The letter. I mean this, this right here, guess what? I'm not gonna read your letter, ever. I've learned that expressing my vulnerabilities can help my patients with this. You helped me become a better therapist. Mm. And that's saying something because I was already fucking brilliant. <laughs> and yet, you were gonna leave without letting me know any of that. It was in the letter. It's all in the letter. It's all in the letter, it's all in the letter. Okay, you know, I'll, fine, I'll read your stupid ass letter. Unbelievable. Spelled favorite wrong. <laughs> I think you probably. Teddy. Very good letter. I don't even think I need to hear what it says. His face said it all. I'm buying Raja Casablanca in Morocco. My only focus in life will be to make us one of the biggest clubs in the world. Mark my words, in 20 years, an African team will win the World Cup. 20 years? I want the incredible man you are, not the footballer. Although the footballer too is incredible. <laughs> I don't want Sam to leave. Oh, wonderful, Mr. Kent. Uh, we've got you upstairs. Uh, you'll start in the black suit, and then we'd love for Nikki to take a pass at your eyebrows. No. Mm-mm, mm-mm. The eyebrows are fine. Leave them alone. When people read this article, they're going to see me. See the real me. Well, we all love Keely, so perfect. The real you is fucking amazing. Now the whole world is going to get to see that. Mm-hmm. You. Keely fucking Jones. That's right. The independent woman. <laughs> You're gonna kill it. Tosh, 
pretty much all done. Yes. Ready for one shot. <laughs> Right, and, and... <laughs> right, you just look grumpy. All right, so earlier when I was suit shopping with Nate, there was a little misunderstanding. Oh, uh, trying to kiss me. It wasn't a big deal. I was just talking, you know. Shh, no. I'm glad she told him. That must have been awkward. <laughs> Thank you for telling me. I was talking to Phoebe's teacher earlier for three hours. At the end, she asked me if I was married, and I just said no, nothing else. I don't know why. At the funeral? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jamie told me he still loves me. Turn to me? You okay, Roy? I don't want those two to break up, but... They're not doing well. If you excuse me, I'm gonna go hit one of my favorite British words and my absolute favorite Diamond Phillips, the loot. <laughs> you to shrink for the team, yeah? Huh? Go on and ask her. I'm scared of snakes. <laughs> like really scared of snakes. Even the tiny ones in my garden. Does that mean anything? Do you want it to mean something? I just don't want to be afraid when I'm tending to my tomatoes. Aww. Is it about the snakes, or is it about the fear and anxiety slithering into your consciousness? That's it. The last one, that's it. I love Paul. Ted asked me to give you this. <sighs> Son of a bitch stole my moon. <laughs> it's very goodwill hunting of him <laughs> and to a psychiatrist i did not put that together that house is clean that's good he's taking better care of himself what is trent texting him about Yeah, I care to comment. I am so angry right now. The headline this morning is the news that Ted Lasso left in the middle of the Tottenham match this season, not due to stomach problems, but because of a panic attack. Big deal. He's a human being. You want to find a captain whose brain works, not some big girl's blouse. Hi, Ted. Remember, the truth will set you free. Just be open and honest about it. First, it'll piss you off. Yep. Your people are gonna be wankers. Seems like wankers. It's like, were people gonna be nice and gentle? Are they gonna be mean? Wankers. Panic at the lasso. That's actually pretty funny. Hey, wanker. If my father had a panic attack at Normandy, we'd all be speaking German. <laughs> yes, sir. Wanker. Just do the work, pal. You'll be alright. Not so wanker. What's the story, Paul Shorey? Ted. Ted. So sorry about the article, Ted. Oh, that's okay, Keely. You know what they say. No such thing as bad publicity, right? <laughs> Although I think they might have been wrong about that one. Which is a bummer, because they were spot on with the whole beer before liquor thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, it tastes like shit. Oh. oh, yeah, well, it is a rough night, and I am now absolutely positive that I switched the salt and sugar. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> 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 mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't have to eat it, girl. Mm. I 
feel like Sam kind of has to go. Jamie's outfits are just ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I don't hear any grunting. <laughs> um, is Roy here? No. You seen this? Hmm. Um, oh, uh, uh. Yeah. Beard knows. Only so many people knew. Yeah. Little weasel. Roy! Ta! Wait, can I, can I just say something first? Yeah, okay. That's a good idea, because when I'm done, you won't have any teeth left and you'll need them for the talking bit. At Rebecca's dad's funeral, I told Keela that I still loved her. It was wrong and I shouldn't have done it, but... It's mature of him. But I just need you to know that I respect you and, and I respect Keela and I respect your relationship and I will never, ever do anything like that ever again. You have to forgive him, Roy. It delights me. <laughs> Before we get started here, I wanted to talk to y'all about the article you saw in the paper this morning. Y'all found out about something from somewhere when you should have found out about it from me first. You know, fellas, we make a lot of choices in our lives every single day. To quote the great UCLA college basketball coach, John Obi-Wan Gandalf, <laughs> it is our choices, gentlemen, that show what we truly are, far more than our abilities. Now, I hope y'all can forgive me for what I've done. Because I sure as heck wouldn't want any of y'all to hold anything back with me. Yeah, no that. problem, Gaffer. And when we sniff out the rat, permission to take socks full of soap to their stomach and chest? Jesus, we'll come on. Fuck him up! Yeah. Come on, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love seeing Nate uncomfortable about that. The money people that back Banter, they want to finance me opening my own PR firm. Ooh, that's exciting. I'm scared of telling Rebecca I'm leaving. Oh, right, because she's so intimidating. Mm. No, she's one of my best friends. And you leaving would be a betrayal on a level usually reserved for Greek mythology. That's probably what Rebecca no. would want for her. Keely, a good mentor hopes you will move on. Yes. A great mentor knows you will. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, just made it up. It's good job, Higgins. I love that. It'd be crazy not to go, right? Samuel. You're overthinking this. Relax. Stop looking for the answer and let the answer come to you. The universe will give you a sign. Okay, Dad. I'll keep an eye out for any messages from the universe. Uh -huh. Look over and those people are probably wearing your jersey. <laughs> and with a tape over it. <laughs> VC, that back banter, they want to finance me opening my own PR firm. Who are you? The boss. <laughs> boss ass bitch. I'm not gonna have time for me anymore. Shut your pretty mouth. <laughs> Just need a second exchange. Hmm. How's all that going? Uh, we broke up. Stay broken up, please. Oh, we're back on. about it Ted. It'll all wash out in the cycle. It always does. Thank you mate. Yeah thanks me. <laughs> thanks me. We're opening the champagne. What? No I thought we were saving that something like really really special. It is. Duck. Oh. Those are not champagne glasses. <laughs> That is a ball on a stem. <laughs> Lizzie just sent over a preview of the Vanity Fair article. Better not used any pictures of me smiling. Like that exists. <laughs> oh, what if it's the one where like they were both having a crisis? Oh. Oh no. They didn't use any of the pictures reviewing them. It's okay. The article's about you. Don't you change a fucking thing. You look powerful. I'm fucking gorgeous. You look like a bilf. Oh, yeah? Go on, show me then. <laughs> Don't forget your bowls of champagne. So, you gonna say anything? Well, I mean, eventually, yeah. You may have noticed through the years that I can be quite loquacious. No, to Nate. Mm hmm. The anonymous source. Oh, wow. What makes you think it was Nate? 
throat, you keep trying to hold all this in. I'm afraid your mustache is going to pop off. <laughs> <laughs> Not look like that fell from the hangover. Bradley Cooper? No. <laughs> Too good to me. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, don't be. No. It's good. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Holy fucking shit. Oh, no. Now what? Rupert's just bought West Ham United. No. And he was talking to Nate. Promise me you will not go and work for him. He can't have fooled me. <laughs> Bit of advice for being a boss. Mm -hmm. Hire your best friend. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm crying again. <laughs> Me too. I love their friendship so much. I want to call my friends now. <laughs> now, who are they playing? To be promoted because I hope it's not West Ham. Well, anybody else got anything you want to talk about before we head out there? Yeah, um, I could uh, uh, use some uh... advice. Not in front of Nate, he'll tell everyone. Roy, are you saying you want to become a diamond dog? Ow! Remember, I told you I had to do that photo shoot thing with Keely. I didn't use a single picture with me in it, and it hurt my. Feeling. Feeling. Just one. She looks so fucking great. On her own. Without me. And then, at Rebecca's dad's funeral, Jamie fucking Tart tells her he's fucking in love with her. And he's still alive? Yeah. <laughs> Instead of beating him to death, I fucking forgave him. I'm still fucking furious about it. There's something I, uh, I have to confess as well. Um. Not what you think, Ted. Damn it. When Keely and I went shopping the other day, I kissed her. <laughs> Coach yeah. Beard. She's telling me about it. Is that okay? I, I kissed her. I kissed your girlfriend. We good. He's not threatened by you. No, no, I deserve to be headbutted. I'd be happy to headbutt you, Nate. Okay, you know what? I think that's enough for right now. We got work to do, yeah? Diamond Dogs dismount? So sometimes the fucking diamond dogs is just chatting about shit and no one has to fucking solve anything and nothing fucking changes. Sometimes, yeah. This is venting. That's cool. Yeah. Oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I love that for them. Just not for Nate. Should have headbutted him. It would have made me feel better. Stay back! How many times do I have to fucking tell you? Stay back! Hey, hey. Hey, Rory! What is going on with Nate's hair? It's just getting grayer and grayer. Is that on purpose? I'm gonna shoot y'all straight. This is bleak. Yeah? I mean, look at it out there. Looks like a Renaissance painting portraying masculine melancholy. <laughs> I should not find that funny, but it is. All right, fellas. Coaches and I are having a little debate. We want to get y'all's take on it. Should we stick with the false nine or switch it up? <laughs> Look, you guys have never been asked before. He's honest, he'll tell you. The tactic is sound, and we are all perfectly capable of executing it. Uh huh. It will work. Okay, it's been decided. We're gonna stick with Nate's false nine. Now, right, come on, bring it in. Let's go. Here we go, Greyhound! <laughs> Hey, Captain. You gonna join us? Only so many people can touch it, though, Isaac. Come on. <laughs> Mission on three. One, two, three. Mission <laughs> Hey, Nate. Hey. Everything okay? Yes, Ted. Everything is okay. You're such a jerk. 
He made me feel like I was the most important person in the whole world. And then he abandoned me. And I, I worked my ass off trying to get your attention back, to prove myself to you, to make you like me again. I haven't even got the, the photo I gave you for Christmas up in your office, just a picture of dumb Americans. And now you're going to play Nate's False Nines or when the team fuck up, which they will. Okay? You can blame it on me. Well, no, fuck that. Everybody loves you. The great Ted Lasso. Well, I, I think you're a fucking joke. Nate. Without me, you wouldn't want a single match and they would have shipped your ass back to Kansas where you fucking belong with your, with your son. Because you, you sure as hell don't belong here. But I do. I belong here. This, di this didn't just fall into my lap, right? I, I earned this. I know you didn't, Nate. Just fuck you, Ted. I don't even know what to say about Nate right now. I feel sympathy for him, but it's like the person that does everything negative to try to get negative attention, and that's not Ted. Come on, Jan. A long ball from the Dutchman. Tart is there. It's not offsides. I don't know how offsides works. Oh. It's a penalty. Yes, yes. So if they get a draw, Nate's thing isn't like the thing that wins the whole game, and so he doesn't get any credit. Done it. You got this, my Chacha. That'd be fun. Trust me. It looks like Tart is giving the ball to Rojas, who hasn't kicked a penalty since, well... Greyhound. <sighs> oh! No! He's wearing a helmet! <laughs> Football is life. Football is life. <laughs> Final score, Richmond 2, Brentford 2, and the joy is back at Nelson Road. Damn it, Nate. Oh, well. I could do this. <laughs> <laughs> Please stay with the team, Sam. Screw you, Nate. I truly enjoyed meeting you. I, and I'm so flattered by your offer. I'm sorry, but my answer is no thank you. I hope you can understand. Please understand. You Nigerian motherfucker! <laughs> Whoa. Wow. You Yoruba trash! Who the fuck do you think you are wasting my time? I will buy your childhood home, and I will take a shit in every room, and then I will burn the place down. Yeah, then I will sit there and I will eat kenke and I will poop on the fucking ashes. Wow. Good call, Sam. <laughs> I don't know why that's funny. <laughs> he dodged a bullet, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you tell a billionaire no, apparently. Right at the cricket bat here, I want to address the article written by our good friend, Mr. Trent Krim, from the... Oh, where is he? Where's Trent? I want to share with you all the truth about my recent struggles with anxiety. And, well, my overall concern about the way we discuss and deal with mental health in athletics. Yeah. I just wanted to let you both know that... I've decided to stay. I, I was just curious, uh, what, um, why'd you decide to stay? I wish I could say it was because of my feelings for you. But the truth is, I think I need to stop worrying about how others feel about me. I'm staying because it's what's best for me and my personal journey. I love that. But he should have said it to Rebecca. You know, I think he might have been talking to you and he was looking at me. Yes. <laughs> Coach Lasso. Hey, there he is. I was worried about you. I thought you might have been in a bike accident or something. Aww. I was fired when they found out I revealed an anonymous source. 
I didn't say anything, I promise. No, I know, Ted. I did. I'm looking for something different, deeper. Good for you. Well, as the man says, you gotta follow your bliss, right? Yeah. But hey, you know what this makes you now, though, right? Trent Grimm, independent. <laughs> My father made the same joke. Uh, I like it. Cool guy. Yeah. <laughs> you and I are going to a villa by the sea for six weeks so you can chill out before you start kicking ass in your new job. Six weeks? That's a really long time. Must be nice to be rich. But I can't go. Yeah. But you should go. What's happening? Are we breaking up? No. Why would you say that? I love you. We'll be fine. I'll see you in six weeks. I hope they'll be fine. Why did he think that they were going to break up? Congratulations. Did he buy the restaurant? What's it going to be? A Nigerian restaurant. He did. Good for you, Sam. Bring home to you. I love that for him. What's this? Screw you, Rupert. Well, I officially hate Nate. Okay, so, um... I always try to find empathy within myself to see people differently. Even at the beginning of, like, the first season when I didn't like Jamie, I was still trying to find reasons to like him. Um, and all this season, I was just trying to find reasons to continue giving Nate the benefit of the doubt. And Ted didn't abandon him. At least that's not what I saw. Ted was going through his own shit, for sure. Um, but, you know, Nate's playing out the relationship that he has with his father with Ted. And... Ted believed in him, and it's really interesting that, like, both of, or the, the, the past two episodes was really, you know, like, Rebecca and Keeley's relationship and Nate and Ted's relationship, and it, change is hard, and when you're accustomed to working with somebody or somebody is, like, so close to you in that environment, it's hard to let go of them, but you always want to see them flourish. You always want to see them shine. You always want them to see you know, that, that, that they can do bigger and better and you you want to see them progress and move on. And that's like what Be Rebecca felt for Keeley. And that's what Ted probably would have wanted for Nate. I don't think Ted would have had an issue with Nate about wanting to, to go to West Ham. The fact that it's Rupert, what a fucking traitor. Nate just is, it's again, it's like somebody behaving badly because they want attention and thinking that's the way to get it. And I feel like him acting out and saying the things that he does if he was trying to get ted's attention so ted would be like hey nate like what's going on <sighs> it's not the way to go about it grow up and the whole spitting thing and then especially after keely like i felt so bad for him because in that moment like he thought he had a connection with her he really did and you know he was drawn to her and and they had that kiss and then he felt so embarrassed and stupid that he did it and you know that the, the tear that rolled down his face like it broke my heart and then as soon as he spits on the mirror i'm just like oh my god i don't know what to do about that kid and i really just um you know i i didn't think we were done with rupert by any means when he's just like oh you can have you know beck's 2.9 percent or whatever i knew it wasn't out of the kind of his kindness of his heart i think we all knew that uh, everyone knew that no one suspected that that was going to be a good thing um but the fact that you know he was just planning on buying another team so he didn't really care about richmond at all it was just about winning sounds like rupert right loyalty isn't his uh strong suit so, you know what, Nate? Good luck with that. Um, the episode with the funeral and just Ted sharing about his father and why he hated him 
And like, it's okay to be mad at somebody who leaves you in that way. Um, because over time, those feelings will fade and then you'll remember the good times, you know? Um, I could just like think about like how mad I was for the longest time that my sister had cancer and died. And, you know, I felt abandoned and left, you know, by myself because now I'm the one that's going to have to take care of my parents, you know, eventually when, when they pass on and I won't have that, that, that other person, my best friend that I should be leaning on, you know, and I was really angry with her for a really long time. And that's okay. Like you're allowed to feel those things. And, and Rebecca feeling the anger towards her father for, you know, treating her mother that way and being angry at her mother and, you know, telling her mother, like, I hated you for letting him treat you that way. Like those feelings are okay, but you can't let it rule your life. You know, you have to have either forgiveness or indifference. And her mother saying, I'm just happy that you hate me because I don't want you to feel indifferently. And her mother ends up like, because I thought she was just like, you know, kind of like this ditzy person. And then like, she was kind of like dropping some truth bombs. I did not expect Rick Astley to be sung at a funeral. Mm -mm. Nope. I thought for sure when Rebecca was giving that eulogy, she was going to lay into her father and just like tell everyone that he was just like this, you know, selfish jerk and, and maybe like talk about what happened. Um, I'm glad she didn't, but I, I couldn't have, Rick Astley was not on my bingo card, although it should have been, it should have been. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that Sassy's back. I thought for sure <laughs> that, uh, Nora hearing about Sam would be like a, oh my God, I can't believe, like, I love Sam, like, like, you know, Aunt Rebecca, how, ca how could you, how dare you? And like, she was just like, nice. I love that. Again, it's that subversion of expectation. If I think it's going to go a specific way, it never does because I've been trained to think one way when it comes to dramatic moments or love triangles. And especially with like, like Jamie and Roy with Keely and then like with the, the Nate of it all and like Roy not really seeing Nate as a threat or even caring about it and just being like, hey, you made a mistake, you know, and then, you know, with with Jamie, like he was really mad but it was like squashed in an episode. <laughs> the writing on this show is so amazing. Uh, speaking of which, the writer's strike is going on right now and the uh, we don't get things like this without amazing writers. And I, I know Brett Goldstein is probably paid very well, but there's a lot of people who are involved in the writing process of certain shows that they're, they're not, they're treated poorly. Uh, they're not paid for their time, they're not paid for their ideas and uh, they're not paid well, even when they have good ideas, so. On that note, I think the most well-written show that I've ever watched in my entire life is Severance, uh, also on Apple TV. I'm not here to plug it, but I'm just saying if you want something that will blow your hair back, Severance is the thing. All the reactions are on the channel. So, you know, uh, <laughs> I kind of had a feeling when May had the note for uh, a Dr. Fieldstone that uh, it was going to be... Ted saying goodbye. And I thought in my head, I had to go see about a girl. And then when she opened it and it just said goodbye and she's like, he stole my move. I couldn't have loved that more. I love when they borrow things from other mediums, other movies, other shows, no matter what it is. And they incorporate it into this show and it makes sense. But it's like all those beautiful moments that we appreciate from those movies and those television shows that are just like, it's so good. It's so good. I really loved the bond that Dr. Fieldstone and Ted had. And I was like, right, like when she just said goodbye, I was like, he's going to feel abandoned because of his father and because of his wife. And, you know, like uh, that those those feelings start to build up. And when you have this trust and rapport with somebody and they do that to you, it's heartbreaking. I don't know how he's going to feel about Nate. And, and, you know, it's like really interesting that Nate had said, like, you abandoned me. And I was like, I don't think that that's what happened. I don't think Ted knew that Nate felt a particular way one way or another. And we know that he has the picture that Nate gave him at home. So he sees it every day. Like it's right next to a picture of his son and screw Nate for even bringing up his son. Screw that kid. Oh my gosh. I know that he's broken and I know that he's got just all of these feelings that he's not dealing with and with his father and then with Ted and now he's got, you know, evil Rupert kind of being that fatherly, the, the person that's trying to believe in him and, and, and motivate him. And it's really just Rupert trying to get revenge on Rebecca. Like, I don't, I don't know how that's going to work out. 
here's the thing is I can sit here and say that I hate Nate and that I'm angry at Nate and I don't understand Nate. I just feel so bad for him. He just needs someone to believe in him. And I think it starts with him. Like he's got to believe in himself and him tearing the believe sign and leaving it on Ted's desk. Like, Nate, buddy, you got to believe that like you are enough because you don't feel like you're enough. <laughs> I really want to hate Nate. And in the moment I did, I, I felt that fiery rage. And now I just, I really pity him. Great writing, great writing. And Nick Mohammed, like great actor. <laughs> He's good. He's really good. I don't know what's going to happen with Roy and Keeley. I mean, especially with Roy obviously having feelings for Phoebe's teacher. Like, they're kind of the same person or, like, they get each other to where, like, Keeley is, like, this ray of sunshine and maybe that's exactly what Roy needs in his life. But also, you know, like, <laughs> I kind of like him and the teacher. Like, just, like, their, their back and forth and camaraderie and how they get each other. Um... I don't I don't know if they're going to make it past six weeks. It seemed like Roy was actually worried, and that's why he even purchased the uh, trip in the first place. Is Like, he's almost feeling insecure about their relationship. And you can love somebody and not be with them. Happens all the time. Now, I don't know, like, with Jamie, like, I know he said it was the feelings that he felt at the funeral, but, like, obviously that's buried deep within there, so... <sighs> It was, it was interesting to watch him kind of struggle at the funeral, even though he's kind of helping Danny through it with his, his horrible dress shoes. <laughs> Such an exaggeration. But I like think about it and like, I, I, I'm a dental assistant and I work in a, you know, dental office and I wear sneakers like all day long. And then when I come home and I, I, I you know, like I never wear dress shoes. So when I have to put on heels, they kill my feet so like i have a lot of sympathy for danny like when i have to go to anything that, that it's a function where i have to wear heels like just everything feels like it's on fire <laughs> and i'm glad that we got ted and sassy kind of back together a little bit i love sassy oh my god like when when her and keely see each other at the funeral and that, that whole reaction like that's how i felt when i saw her i was just like i love this woman i love how she speaks to Rupert and she she's not afraid to say the thing that needs to be said and and she's like kind of a good bad influence on Rebecca but even knowing that Rebecca's father had cheated on her mother and she never said anything about it and 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 that's that's a great friend you know and she like shows up the way that she did at Rebecca's family home <laughs> I adore sassy and I can't it's I don't want to say it's like a, a Roy Keeley situation, but where like Ted is the ray of sunshine, sassy is this sassy like spitfire that, you know, like maybe that's what Ted needs in his life. Um, Beard and Jane, please just break up already. <laughs> I want Coach Beard to like have like an actual good girlfriend or like have a good relationship. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Jane is a good girlfriend and he's a horrible boyfriend. I just know that they don't really go well together. Like the, the makeup breakup thing uh, on a consistent like basis, that's not healthy. And I do like that, um, Rebecca's mom, like when she's talking about like how much she actually doesn't like Rupert and Rebecca is just like, but you're always so nice to him. And she literally is like, kill him with kindness. And like, I, I love that that's what they did when he's like leaving the funeral and everything, because I'm sure it unsettles Rupert very much. But I, I, I love that. I think that's a lesson that like we could all take, because I know that I don't necessarily kill people with kindness. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm kind and then I reach my limit where I'm like, okay, mm we're going to have to bring out the, uh, my, my lead tasso. I call her Penny. You guys now know. My alter ego, her name is Penny. Don't know why. I'm trying to remember if I do know why. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> and I really, like, I'm not uncomfortable so much with uh, Sam and Rebecca. I mean, I am with the age difference because, you know, it's, it's a big jump. Generationally, I don't know. They have a lot to talk about besides soccer. But Sam does seem like an old soul. He's very wise. Um, so I can see, I, that's probably why I thought he was older than 21 is like literally, you know, he's, 
he's a bigger adult than you know he he's a bigger adult than Rupert it's like by far and him like saying no to going to a Nigerian team to play in Casablanca Blanca Blanca whatever it is uh and and he made the right call because I was just like I like this guy and then I was like I don't know if I like this guy especially after the no handshake with Ted thing um and then I was like oh yeah 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 no I don't like this guy at all I mean he Pretended to choke out a mannequin and then poop on it. Billionaires are weird. <laughs> but Sam is like so wise and made the decision that he did. You know, he didn't make it rash. Like he wasn't influenced on his emotions about Rebecca or about, you know, being part of a Nigerian team and like the vision that was being kind of pushed at him. He made the best decision for himself. And then he bought a restaurant because that idea was in his head. And I love that. We know that food from, from, from Sam's home means the world to him. And I, I, if you can't go home, bring it to you. I'm proud of Sam. I really, I'm really, really proud of Sam. And then I knew that when he saw the jerseys that it was going to probably influence him to stay, but I didn't anticipate the tape I didn't anticipate the tape. And the one thing about being promoted is that now they're back in the Premier League, which means that they will have to play uh, West West Ham? West Hampshire? It's West Ham something. Uh, and um, Nate knows all of their trick plays not happy about that and nate's right like like you know like like he wasn't given credit for for all the stuff that he had done to the team ted never coached soccer before so he had to rely on nate and what nate knew and nate's a good coach like no one ever said he wasn't i i don't really know what he he wanted i mean do you normally go to a press conference and be like well this play was my play and this play was coach beard's play and this this play was you know uh roy kent's play and and this one this one's the nate like, I don't think that happens during press conferences. And it's really interesting because last season when they lost, no one was blaming Nate. Everybody was blaming Coach Lasso, right? But Nate wants all the credit. <laughs> then you're going to have to take some of the blame. Or you're not. You're just going to go to another team, dress in black, dye your hair, and listen to a smug billionaire. Gah. Glad to see Higgins has an office again. It was full of greyhounds. That was delightful. It's like a dream come true. I don't know what they picked. I don't think it was Tina Fayhound. It was a lighter one. But Danny scoring the winning goal with <laughs> R.I.P. Earl on his boot. <laughs> oh, this show. This show knows how to get you. Beautiful moments, fun moments, caring moments, highly emotional moments. You know, both Rebecca and Ted talking about their father at the same time. Jason Sudeikis is very surprising. He really is. I, like, forget that it's Jason Sudeikis. That's, that's Ted Lasso. You know, like, that's amazing when I forget the actor playing the character and it's just the character. Iconic absolutely iconic okay guys if you want to watch the full-length reactions to these episodes they will be available on my patreon in a watch along format where you will need your own copy because of copyright that's just the way it be i don't want to go to jail <laughs> but in the meantime like subscribe and leave a comment down below how you felt about nate at the end of this season <clears throat> this season has so many daddy issues <laughs> so many daddy issues which is 100% a trope that like shows fall back on movies fall back on but I feel like it's done so well it is presented so well but mm. who wanted to headbutt Nate who wanted to see Roy headbutt Nate me me I really did and the fact that Roy actually did headbutt Jamie <laughs> wild uh but uh yeah yeah i know that's not the main takeaway from the entire season but i feel like the the build all season has been nate's betrayal 
but I still feel sad for him. I still feel pity for him. I feel bad. Not enough to, you know, want West Ham to win, though. Uh, I'm, I'm still a Richmond gal, win or lose. Promotion or relegation, still a Richmond gal. <laughs> I'm going to start season three tomorrow. <laughs> So hopefully by the time I'm done watching everything, I will have been caught up. Even though it won't be in real time, I hopefully will be able to watch the final uh, two episodes. I think there's two more episodes at the time I'm filming this uh, of season three. So hopefully I will have caught up in a week and a half. It's doable. <laughs> Plus I love this show, so it wouldn't be a shock. <laughs> okay, guys. I'll see ya.